extend a range of motion couch or quad hip flexor stretch. Now I can use a big medicine ball. I can use a box or bench. I can also just get tucked close to a wall and put the foot up against the wall like that as well. So lots of options. You can also do it as it's called in a couch. This is the kind of upper body resting portion of the couch. This is the actual place you would sit with your knee on it. And I can even take a pillow or pad or put the leg on the seat as well. But anyway, you can figure it out, you'll make it work. What I'm doing here is really focusing on contracting my abdomen. And then I'm gonna just do a lot of different motions here, trying to work on squeezing the glute, opening up the hip and the quads. So if you suffer from back pain or knee pain, this is a money drill. And this is also gonna help us get more hip flexion, ultimately getting the knee closer to the chest and the more we get motion through the hip, the more glute contraction we can get as well. So I can work here. I can work on turning away, get a little upper back rotation. I can work on coming off to the side, really get into the high hip flex or psoas and oblique section here. I can come forward by elevating the lead leg. I'm getting more flexion in this leg. If I elevate the heel itself, I can work on getting my knee more forward, mobilizing the ankle, the foot, the toes, coming in and out like that, getting some good hip rotation. I can open up here, come back, add some motion through the scapula as well, add twists and turns both ways. You've got the ability to explore this. And again, don't just use this as a warm up to this workout, use this as kind of an ongoing EHO, every hour in the hour mobility or daily recovery drill as well. And again, just work, even try to come all the way back and just try to glute yourself through and stretch and open up this area. Peel it open, you'll have the ability then to do more killer core variations without lower back pain. We are testing your plank skills today in all three planes of motion, particularly getting after your obliques, and we're gonna really stretch those quads and hip flexors too. So here's what we do. Block down like this, stack the feet together, head in line with the spine. I'm going to exhale as I pull through to plank, hand can go on hip here. Again, think about leaning against a wall or standing on your side. Now, inhale down to dip the hip, make ground contact, push it back up. Then tuck this knee towards the chest, hook the hand on the ankle, exhale through to stretch the hell out of that quad and hip flexor while we're stabilizing in the plank. All right, then bring it back. Inhale through. <sighs> Secure it on the other side, keeping the hips up. And you can take some time here to stretch. All right, bring it back and then repeat for time. Now, rest pause as needed. If you can't do the side plank quad stretch portion, skip it and just do the hip dip, okay? Or if you can't do the other one, you can do it that way. Ideally, do them all at once. Try to stay in motion. You're resting one side while you're working the other. So we kind of bounce back and forth, focus on your form and technique. Don't speed this up. And then make sure the beauty of planking while we do that side plank quad stretch is it stabilizes the spine. So the motion is through the hips, not the lower back. So that's the main focus on that exercise. It's gonna smoke you out. It's also gonna really open you up. It's a deadly combination. Lying double banded straight leg raise mobility. This is gonna help with kicking any sort of knee or leg raise variation. We're trying to get more hip flexion and hamstring mobility. Here's what I recommend if you can. You'll take a thicker band, wrap it around the leg that's gonna stay down and then secure it right in the hip crease of this leg. This will actually create what's called a banded distraction and clear some space in the hip capsule itself so that you're the head of the femur isn't running into the pelvis. You're gonna take the other band and the leg we're really focusing on stretching, you go like this. And I can also choke up as tight as I want on this band like that as well. And all I'm gonna do is come back and initially, you got time on this, just focus on trying to use your quads, keep this leg down the whole way to pull this leg back and your arms as well. Back off a bit and kind of push your heel into the band to kind of get the glutes going just slightly and come right back and just keep working this leg back. So exhale through, back off. I can also work on just kind of keeping this knee tight and bent and then just 
doing some leg pumps. And then if you can pin the arms down, this is aggressive stretching, okay? This should be very challenging. Make sure to exhale through the challenging portion of the exercise. And that's what we're trying to do here, get the range of motion. So it's as hard as you make it. This double band setup will help tremendously. And again, this will be so key for being able to get your legs up higher on leg raises and also two areas that are very conducive to creating lower back pain, tight hamstrings, tight hips, hip flexors. And we're working that big time with this exercise. Also will help you with your, your running, lunging, gait mechanics as well. Elevate the toes. That's gonna stretch the calf, ankle, and Achilles. And I want you to also try to create a slight forward lean as if sprinting, okay? So this is key. It's gonna load the whole system up. What we're gonna then do from there with self-assistance on the uh, wall, a pair of parallel bars, chairs, however you set up for this within a power rack, I'm going to fully X, actually we'll do a first hinge, inhale it back and just kind of work on pumping that heel straight up to the sky, open it up. All right, stretch that whole side here. Now we're gonna come into full flexion of this leg and extension of the trail leg. And I want you to pulse, exhale up, inhale down. And then after some pulses, pump, same way. And then go right again. So total single leg hip sequence here. Get back, stretch it out, pull through. Strengthen the hip flexors there. And then the other hip flexor too, right in the middle. That quad is very active with the leg straight, also challenging our mobility to the max. This is an extreme joint ankle mobility exercise. But make no mistake, it's also very important for strengthening the hip flexors in the core. This will help with sprinting, running in general, but sprinting in particular because the extreme joint angles. It's also gonna help us get really good at our, yeah, these guys. Get higher up there, also legs straight as well. You know what's coming. Toes elevated crane. No, not that crane, different crane. I'm thinking the cranes that actually build buildings and structures. Now we're elevating the toes and you could say, oh, this is my, we already did this. No, you didn't do it. Okay, this is different. Now when we did the pelvic pendulum, all right, that is more dynamic and there's not as much strength required in these muscles, the hip flexors and the quads to keep that leg up because we're actually using momentum to swing it through. In this case, all we're gonna do is kind of a slight kick back through the heel. I want you to activate this glute a little bit, slightly hinge, but not too much. And then slowly, keeping that leg straight, lift it as high as you can. Wow, it doesn't go as high. Why? Because dynamically, that's momentum. This is pure muscle strength. And especially when we're doing things like the L-sit, the hanging leg raise, you might be stronger on one side versus the other. And that might actually adjust and affect your positioning. So again, we're fixing and balancing between sides. Inhale it back, activate that glute in a nice little kick. Slow, slow smooth exhale up and just try to really finish through that hip and get tall. And every rep, just try to get a little bit higher. The goal is to get that foot above hip level, long-term, think like Jean-Claude Van Damme, all the way up there. It's possible, especially uh, you know with time, but this is also even more challenging of a stretch because here, much harder to get at that angle in the calf, ankle, Achilles. This will also fortify the Achilles in a big way as well. So again, pistols, L-sits, and um, hanging leg raises. This drill is so good for that. This will also really get the abs, hip flexors going, and those muscles tend to look good. Ooh, Uncle Baby out here swiveling them hips for the pelvic pendulums. When in doubt, alliteration is the key to success. Here's what we're doing. Elevate the toes, better stretch for the calves, the ankles, the Achilles. Offhand touch on a pull, wall, whatever you can have access to. And I want this leg to be able to swing through. This leg stays straight. The goal of this hand that's assisting is to support us and stabilize us and keep the hips and shoulders square throughout the exercise. All I'm gonna do is hinge back and I'm actually gonna try to keep this leg as straight as possible and right here. Wow, 
massive stretch of the whole posterior thigh into that hip capsule. Come all the way through, <sighs> exhale it up. And try to keep both legs as straight as possible and stay upright here. Inhale down, <sighs> exhale up. And then start slow, correct at any point you need to at various positions. And then eventually we can actually make it more dynamic in ballistic. And I'm always mindful of my low back position. All right, this is actually, you might actually feel some soreness the next day in your muscles because of it's, it's like ballistic stretching. But again, start slow, ramp up the speed over the course of the set and just be mindful. Why I put my hand here is so that I can tell I'm never flexing or overly extending my low back. It's always nice and neutral, a slight little divot in the back of the hand helps me with that. This will also stretch my shoulder and uh, in uh, chest, so it actually helps with posture as well. So this is just such a beautiful drill. This will help you on, what's the shape, right? Well, hanging leg raises, L-sits, and also our pistol training. So this is a great feeder exercise to all that. I also love it pre-walk, run, or anytime you've been sitting for a while and you wanna adjust those hips. <sighs>Pistol, contract, relax. Again, another genius movement from a genius trainer, if I might say so myself. But again, all we're doing here is we're just focusing on areas of weakness, spending time strengthening those weaknesses. So we elevate the toes of the trail leg, get more stretch at the calf, ankle, Achilles, we're trying to really get tall up top, squeeze this back glute to open up this hip flexor. And you modify this by going with any sort of lower structure. I can go aerobic step or chair and you can start lower, but ideally we wanna have ourselves in a situation where we're contracting, relaxing above and below knee above hip level, because this is where your psoas get active, right here. Also, critical muscle, your middle quad, rectus femoris, another hip flexor, often tight, and it can cramp up on you, because this is a high tension exercise. But you wanna do pistols, L-sits, hanging leg raises with your legs straight. This is a really great drill for that. So I'm using some assistance from the wall or pole, with one hand, and all I'm doing is, this is the relaxed portion, the leg is straight, squeeze this quad, exhale up, hold for at least a second or two, three to five seconds ideally, inhale it down. And I'm doing this for time, so it's an active, aggressive, stretching mobility drill. Inhale down, let it rest. This is also allowing you to not cramp up, because if we're holding it for too long, you will cramp up on this, especially if you're new to the exercise. So again, resting it, squeezing it on the exhale, full exhale. Inhale it back down and rest. And we'll do both sides, obviously. But again, progress to a higher bar or platform to rest the leg on, and uh, just becomes even better by using the slant board. But this will really clean up your form and technique. And a lot of people think, oh, I don't have the strength to do this exercise. Actually, some of you are strong enough, you're just not mobile enough. And that's what this drill is all about. Hanging glute ham walkout marches. Now I'll show you a little bit of a way to spice it up, but first we get locked down, rib shoulders down, glutes clenched, and then really almost kind of recline yourself a bit. Lock yourself down. I'm gonna do an exhale, <sighs> inhale back, both legs. So I march with the bent knee position, then I walk out to the straight legged position, and then I do the same thing, but now legs are straight. Really smoking the glutes and hamstrings, obviously whole backside's active. <sighs> walk it back. Now, I can increase the challenge by adding a row in each component. Such a great way to warm up everything in the body here. Get such great posterior chain work, okay? I could have rowed first, or I could row now, and then I walk it back slowly and repeat for time, okay? Have some fun. Great way to start the workout. Rest, pause as needed, but uh, look, we're getting ready for one hell of a push here. Prepare yourself for Uncle Baby Biscuits' official pre-sex warm-up. Three reps, that's all you need, and you're guaranteed to go balls deep. It's also a great way to work the entire backside of the body and finish off an amazing core workout. So I've got the slant board set up for a better push-off angle. You can also do this feet on the floor. I'm combining a hip extension plus a spinal extension, and I'm going really slow and controlled. So, extend the hips, and then pack those shoulders down and back. 
and try to get that head on the ground. Squeeze it out. Inhale it back. So I'm pulling, pulling, arms are straight, full extension, come back and bring it right back. Man, this is as full body as it gets, okay? And it will really, no, sorry, let her come. Come here, Molly, come here. Tell them how lucky you are to be with Fitness Man.